This film shows how the effective supervision of care workers or care staff can improve the quality of care and the outcomes for those they support. Michael, shall we go and clean your teeth? Come then. Michael is severely autistic and lives in a supported living environment in Margate. You've got to put some toothpaste on your brush, Michael. He receives 24-hour care, with care staff supporting him in all aspects of his life. John is one of his two regular support workers. Then you're going to need to march. John and Michael have a good relationship and Michael responds well to John's manner and tone of voice. Another key aim of effective supervision is to encourage care staff to support people as much as possible to do things for themselves. Michael's Care is planned by the Avenues Group, a charity which supports people facing significant disadvantage due to disability or illness to live as full a life as possible. Right. Michael, can you dry the dishes now, please? No. Come no. on. Come on. Please. No. no? Shall we do it later then? Mm. Yes? OK, then we'll do it later. Carers are supervised every six weeks, and currently John's biggest challenge is how to maximise his caring role. Now he's opted to work part-time. I'm interested to um, have a little bit of a think, John, about, you know, as recent times you've, you're, you've reduced your hours, you're kind of semi-retired semi now, aren't you? And I'm interested am, to yeah. see how you feel that impacts on a daily basis when you're supporting Michael. Caroline, who manages 14 care staff, has been trained in supervision skills provided by Avenues Group. The core aim of the organisation is for supervisors to help staff improve the quality of life of those who use the service. Supervision can be used to review and reflect on outcomes for people we support right across their entire life. So it will be about everyday basic stuff like how they might need to have support to go shopping or support to go to see the dentist. But also you can use supervision to look at how you can support people to meet some short-term objectives or long-term objectives. So I'll put that... Supervisors are also encouraged to boost staff performance by providing emotional support. And this afternoon, Caroline's helping John adjust to his new working hours. You were there for quite a few days of the week and now you're often only there just for one day of the week and I wondered if you've got any thoughts on how that's impacted on you and your support of Michael really? Well it's trying to fit as much in as I can in one day, that, that's the issue really. I mean, well, I still enjoy working with Michael, uh, we, seem to, uh, we seem to get on well. Yeah, you do. He listens to me, occasionally smiles, yeah. which is nice. Perhaps I try to tr want to try and squeeze too much in the day. Can you get your wallet out, Michael, so we can get the get the bus pass out, please? OK, Michael. In the past, supervision was highly structured with a detailed checklist, but now it takes a more reflective approach. Here you go, Michael. I would really like to do more for Michael, really, going yeah. out. So, at the end of the day, you can't... You're not a one-man band here, you can't fit it all I in know. for yourself. I know. One of the barriers that um, we used to face with staff when they had their supervision was they felt they were being told what to do, when to do it and how to do it. Um, we've put all of our supervisors and managers through a coaching programme to get them to really use a coaching style in turn. And when I say that, I mean by asking their staff questions about how would you improve the service rather than being told you need to improve the service by doing A, B and C. Um, and that has been a big shift in emphasis and style in which we expect our managers to carry out supervisions. Tell me what, what you've been doing with Michael at the gym. The last time I took him, he cycled quite contently for about 20 minutes. Did he? Yeah, 20 minutes. And I was, and I was decided from doing my bike would as you? well. So it's encouragement for Michael and um, he enjoys doing it. I think anybody, and I know, you know, um, a lot of people, when you go to the gym, part of it is to have a mate with you because you inspire yeah. each other, don't you? Yeah. And a little bit of competitiveness, none of that, you know, that yeah, doesn't hurt, Yeah, he was it? quite enjoying, enjoying it. Okay. I would say if I was to turn the clock back about five years, Caroline would have had her staff in supervisions and would have been telling them what they're not doing right, what they need to do to get it, get it right, where her style very much now is a, a participative style with her staff to identify 
problems if there are problems and what the member of staff will do about getting the problems right rather than being told how to do it. The skills that you need when you're a supervisor are that you have to have some empathy for everybody's individual situation, you have to appreciate that everybody has a different personality and how you approach an issue with one person you may well approach differently with another. That will also depend on people's experience, how long they've been in the organisation, but you very much have to adapt your style according to your individual staff member. It's nice for yes. somebody to talk to. So really, I don't give up. You know, you could give up sometimes, but you know, you talk to Caroline and you know that there's this trouble in me and uh, she's very upbeat, which makes me feel a bit better because sometimes you go into, you know, am I really um, doing as well as I could be? But no, Caroline, reassur she's reassuring really. And we was thinking about taking Michael fishing yeah. as well. Um, I was planning on taking Michael actually to the library, see if we can get some books on it, and also go on the internet. Yeah, OK, so quite a lot to look into. A priority of supervision at Avenues Group is to encourage workers to help the people they support to participate more in the community. Look at that. Shall we click on one and have a little look? Yeah? Oh, look at that trout, Michael. You see it? Look. It looks so it's at the bottom of the seabed, doesn't it? Do you find that the supervision also improves the quality of your work? It does improve the quality in the sense it keeps, I might say, it keeps you on my toes. I think that's the word, really. It's trying to improve all the time. It's, it's sort of reminding me that we could sort of keep up, keep up the actual uh, good work for Michael, really. It's absolutely imperative that you talk about the people you support when you have supervision. As a social care organisation, they're our customer, they're who we provide a service to. So the supervision is completely valueless as far as I'm concerned if you're not talking about the people that you support because everybody in the organisation, whatever job they have, their purpose is to provide a service to the people that we are paid to provide a service to. So it's absolutely imperative that you spend that time having those discussions. And I do the same in my supervisions with my manager. Supervision can also be useful for dealing with difficult situations that arise, such as the best way to approach intimate personal care. The group has a policy that female carers can look after both male and females, whereas male carers can only look after men. The aim is to provide gender-matched personal care, but this is not always possible, as there are higher numbers of women carers to men. For instance, here to Menue, who also cares for Michael, is affected by the policy because he sometimes works with female residents. Now, I want to just check with you. We've obviously had a load of um, discussions. I feel like I've discussed it a lot with nearly every single member of staff around the personal care policy. So I really There's widespread support for the policy, but it's a challenge for supervisors because it impacts on carers' working hours. And I know you were fretting a little bit about it. So how's it gone since we've had some discussions about it? How's it working for you? For me, it's like uh, we end up just taking limited hours and the female can work yeah. as much as they can. Yeah, I appreciate that's difficult. It is difficult. Yeah. But ultimately, though, what we've got to do is make sure that we provide the best service we can to the people that we support. Yes, absolutely. So, but on a daily basis, you're OK with it at the moment? I'm fine with okay. it. It's, it's a, lot, a lot improved, like, really, since last time we had discussed this. It's improved yeah. a lot. So why do you think it's improved since the last time we spoke about it? Because it's rotating why it's better. OK, good. That's why it's improved. OK. Supervision can help the organisation in two ways. So if the organisation themselves would like to have information pass through to staff, it's a good way of ensuring that all the staff receive that information. The other way round, it's a good way of staff providing feedback to the organisation. It helps me talking about it really easy. If I don't keep it inside me, I have to let it out. And then she, I get reassurance from Caroline and then she say, that's it, I need to talk to this, we solve this. And then I sort of, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all right with it. So it relieves the stress, it relieves the pressure. 
Which one do you want, cheese and onion or chicken? You want that one? Menue is a British Algerian Muslim, and at times he's found cultural differences with other staff members difficult. But again, supervision has helped. I could take it to supervision and say, that person made a comment I'm not happy with. Can you please talk to that person to stop making comments? And that makes me unhappy and, and that affects my job in a way. Does the supervision solve the problem? It does solve it. If you get the manager, the manager who is fair, like Caroline, she does solve the problem. So if staff feel valued, they feel like they're doing a worthwhile job and they're receiving good feedback on how they're progressing within their job, then th they're going to be a happier person. If, you're, if your morale is, is high, you deliver the care and then it makes you more want to stay in this job and you deliver more for, the, for people with support like Michael. Formal supervision is reinforced by informal visits. This afternoon, Caroline's calling in to see how far John's progressed with plans to take Michael fishing. Hello, Michael. Hi, John, you? all right? Yes, thanks, how are you? I'm all right, how are you, Michael? You good? So how are things going? Have all you right. had a good morning? Actually, yeah, yeah, it's, it actually went very well. We went on the computer. Yep. And we saw a particular trout which Looked attractive, and I was saying to Michael, we'll have to, we'll have to get those, <laughs> try and fish those out. <laughs> Supervision is important for staff morale and staff retention because if staff feel that they're having some good positive feedback about the good work that they're doing, or even some support if they're struggling in an area, then they're going to feel valued as a member of staff. And if they feel valued as a member of staff, then they're going to want to do their job as best they can and of course that can only benefit the people that we support.